Hi, this is Phil Kerner, and welcome to lesson number 345. And what we're going to talk about today is an email I got uh, just yesterday from a fellow named Robert. Robert wasn't quite sure how to measure uh, the correct diameter of a reamer. He was having trouble. He gets a lot of different readings. You know, um, I have to say, sometimes I forget that there are people out there, this is a hobby for them, and uh, what might be second nature to me, or second nature to you, is not to other people. So uh, what I did tonight was I brought home some reamers and decided to do some other lessons tonight on measuring drills and other end mills to get them correctly uh, dimensioned. So this should be a good lesson for you. If you have, uh, you're new in the trade, reamers, you know, are usually labeled correctly. But uh, it's interesting to me uh, that Robert has a PhD and uh, he's retired and doing some ho home hobbyist stuff. So the lesson here really is when a PhD gets stuck, this is where they go. That was a joke. Relax. I'm from Erie, PA. We have a very sophisticated sense of humor here. So enjoy the video. I know you'll learn something from it. And, uh, you know, correctly measuring cutting tools is a little bit of a uh, black art. But uh, I hope this video will help you. So let's talk about checking uh, the diameter of reamers. Now, the first thing you can kind of count on is if you look at a reamer on the side of it, it does give the size. And I'm not sure if this shows up on the camera. It says 0.501, all right? So we're going to get into a couple different things here. So we'll put chuck this up so I can measure it hands-free here. And my trusty Fritz Kerner series 1962 Albrecht Chuck here's how we do it so we're going to take our micrometers here and we're going to start floating them around I'm opening them and closing them until I find the largest spot okay so I've got 501 there Reamers are usually very accurately marked, all right? Not always, always check them, but it says 501 on it, it's probably 501. So let's slide it around, check a couple more teeth. See, now I've got 498, but I know I'm not right. So what you do is you just keep rolling it around. In this case, I'm going counterclockwise and making sure you're gonna read the widest measurement. And quite frankly, oh, we're close. These two teeth are about two tenths under. Five oh, uh, point five hundred and eight tenths. Let's check another two teeth. And again, you're looking for the widest point. It's okay, right there it says 492, relax. You don't have the widest spot. So just keep rocking it back and forth until you find the widest spot. And there we go, 501. Now, if you really are into this, um, I've got this uh, beautiful set of uh, digital micrometers that'll take you to 50 millions. Same deal. I'm gonna go back and forth until they find the widest spot. There you go, 501. So you just gently rock them back and forth just like I'm doing now until you find the widest spot. And you gotta make sure you rock your micrometers back and forth this way and up and down so they're, they're settled. Okay, there's uh, 5013. It's just a matter of rocking them back and forth it's a 501 reamer. That's it. So one of the things people get confused about, about reamers, and I, I should have said this at the beginning of this video, you know, reamers uh, size a hole, they don't locate a hole. So if you're really concerned about locating a hole, see what all a reamer is going to do is follow the drill that you put in. So if the drill is off location, the reamer is still follow it, right? So if you're really concerned about uh, getting your position correctly, 
If they're not sharpened right, it's not that hard to sharpen a reamer. Uh, that's what will cause it to cut um, the wrong size. For the most part, reamers usually tend to cut on size. If you're really worried on a one-time project, uh, what you'd want to do is find, buy two pieces of material. And um, I mean, if it's a 10-foot square, don't do that. But the similar material and do a pilot test and make sure this reamer is going to ream appropriately. What you want to do is, um, you know, the standard when I went, uh, grew up in the trade was uh, 64th under. But for, uh, like this reamer, yeah, I would go 64th under. But for anything under a quarter inch, I, I, get, I, I tend to drill them about uh, 10 thousandths under size to get a little closer. And if it's a really small reamer under uh, an eighth inch, uh, I'll get that within 10 to 8 thousandths just to scrape it out. Um, there are times where I've actually... Um, Take it within a few thousands for the end mill, and then run the reamer through just to size it, and it'll it'll do it at least on a CNC machine. So that's it. So let's prove this one more time. And uh, if we just take uh, this guy here, this is a let's, let's read what this one says. This one says it's a 188 reamer. And again, you should be able to trust what's been put on the side. These guys are pretty pretty good at what they do. So let's check it. We'll use the digitals. We are Size here, camera, camera. Take this in, and okay, I got 178. That's where you guys get confused. Keep rocking it. Go counterclockwise. 180. Still not the widest part. Just keep doing this until you find the widest part. 1867 8, 187.9. I thought this was a half inch drill, and I was measuring it. This is actually a 64th under. This is a, uh, what would that be, 31 64th drill. And you just keep rocking it back and forth until you get the widest spot. Yep, this is a 64th under. Wrong spot. 
that's just a collection at home, but that, that's how you do it, okay? Uh, calipers, close enough for a drill. So, um, what makes a drill? Drill oversize. Well, let's talk about that. I'm just going to give you experience here, but the main culprit for when a drill drills oversize are these lands from here to here. That's the issue. They've got to be equal from the center point to the tip or to the edge or the margin, what's called the drill, center point to the margin. If they're not equal, you're going to get an oversized hole. Drills will drill oversized if they're plowing in, right? So getting your drill sharpened right is very important. And uh, occasionally I run into a drill. I always expect when I drill a hole that the, the drilled hole is going to be, you know, you, it's usually not undersized. But I'm, I'm, I'm like a plus or minus three to five on a drilled hole, unless I'm using an exotic, you know, $200 drill. But for a normal high-speed twist drill, depending on the material, you know, a plus two or three, usually not undersized, that should do it. You don't want it running out a mile, but, you know, it should be you know, within three thousandths. That should do it. So that's the culprit when a drill is drilling oversized is that it's the lands aren't equal and that's been because it's been un, uh, resharpened incorrectly so again because of the influx of uh, junk we get into the, uh, the trade buy american drills they're not that much more expensive and they should be sharpened right all right so as a bonus session here tonight so we just looked at uh, reamers and drills two flute four flute six flute easy to measure but what do you do when you have uh, something like this? Well, there you go. Well, let's do it sideways here. Five flute end mill. Well, at our place, we have a very expensive presetter that'll measure that. But if you really want to know, you take this end mill and run it through what I use is graphite or a piece of aluminum or something dense, right? Don't, not wood, but something dense. And uh, then uh, either take that to your comparator or use a set of... Uh, calipers and measure the slot that it cut okay and you'll know the diameter of the mill and the same would go for this one uh, this would be a uh let's see here a lot of collections here brought a bunch of stuff home from work tonight and i, I wonder if they think i'm going to sell this stuff on ebay i walked out tonight with this box of stuff so this is a 15 degree end mill well how do you measure the tip of that right a uh, couple choices you can use a, a hole gauge and then do some math and see how much it's sticking out. The easiest way, again, uh, is to take a piece of uh, graphite or aluminum or something, again, that's dense, mill a slot through about 100 thousandths down, and uh, check it on the comparator. Or again, uh, if that's all you got, to use your calipers and measure the, the, the bottom of the slot, and that'll tell you what the tip diameter. Three and five flute end mills. Um, they don't get used that often, but most tapered cutters, from, uh, especially from Weldon, they are um, uh, odd flutes, okay? So that's how you do it. You just run them through a piece of material and check it with calipers and uh, or a comparator, and then uh, it lie about that size a little bit. Add, you know, five thousandths to it, just to make sure. Take a, take a, 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 a semi-finished cut before you do your victory lap. Uh, you can measure the part and see where you're at. So I hope that helps. Uh, again, uh, I guess I could do one more thing here. This is turning into a much more long video than I thought, but that's fine. Three-quarter end mill. Same deal as the reamer. All I'm going to do is take this end mill and find the widest spot by rocking back and forth. 720, this one's been reground, 720, I'm going to find the widest spot. This one's 720. Let's check the next two teeth just to make sure. Seven nineteen eight. a couple tenths off, but there we go. There's the widest spot, 720. So it's a matter of rocking them back and forth, upside down, and right and left, and you will get the widest spot. It takes a little practice, but you'll get it. So I hope that helps. That's a basic lesson on measuring uh, reamers. Trust the size that's on them, but verify, and uh, same with end mills. So uh, hope that helps you guys a little bit. 
as you set up your uh, next project. But if it's really important and you're building a one-time thing at your house or your, your home shop, find a sample piece of material and uh, do that uh, as a sample first and verify that you got what you want. Because the one thing I don't know about what the, uh, the email uh, wanted was what type of fit they wanted. And boy, press fit, slip fit, press, you know, and, and uh, um, press fit and slip fit, you know, you're really dealing with a thousandth of an inch there. So uh, again, that's uh, my two cents on measuring the diameter of cutting tools that you'll use normally on many projects. So there you have it. The best advice I can give you if you're struggling with learning how to measure the diameter of uh, reamers, drills, or even um, end mills, buy a great reamer from an American company. An American company, it'll be stamped with the right size. And unless you're really unlucky, you'll get a reamer that's uh, on size. So order a half inch reamer, 0 .500, and practice with your micrometers until you get that. It's just a matter of feel and touch. You'll get it. You will. And it just takes a little time. So uh, I hope you enjoyed that. For 300 more videos just like this one, just visit thetoolanddieguy.com. I'm Phil Kerner, the Tool and Die Guy, and we'll see you on the next video.